Okay, so the code compiled, which means that it's probably going to work. So let's go ahead and upload it. I'm going to click upload and let's see how this works. Okay, here we go. And we see the LEDs coming on one at a time and then they're going off one at a time. But wait a minute, something's wrong because it's not, they're not coming on again. It's supposed to repeat over and over again. They're supposed to come on one at a time and then go off one at a time and then repeat. What, what, what the heck? What kind of mistake could we have made that would actually cause that? So let, let's take a look because something, something here is wrong. This is what's called a logical error. The code compiled. So the compiler is happy, but obviously we did something wrong because it's not working like we expect it to work. So this looks good. We're just making all the pins 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 high using this for loop with the variable i. It's a byte, and it's 0 to 5, and we're uh, 0 to 4, actually, and we are good here. So, okay, let's step into the loop. Here again, we have another byte called j. We turn our LEDs on, and they're going on. So I have a feeling that this section of code is correct, and there's nothing wrong with it. Now here we have this other third for loop and we're using this for loop to turn them off. And let's see, we have another byte, a third byte we called k. We set it equal to four and k, what, as long as it's greater than or equal to zero, we keep decrementing it. But wait a minute, wait, when k hits zero, what happens? Well, a byte can only store numbers from 0 to 255, which means bytes can't go negative. What's happening is this byte k is actually going negative and it's causing the program to crash. That's why it's not looping through and going again. Wow, how can we fix that? What can we do? Let's see. I want to save space, so this is okay. This never goes below 0, neither does this, but this one does. Let's change that to an integer because integers can be both positive and negative. Yeah, they take up more space, but you need to make sure, guys, that your data type fits your purpose and fits what you're doing, and you're not using the wrong data type. And I guess that's one of the lessons I wanted to drive home in this, is that if you don't use the right data type, you can get wrapped up in some stuff, and it can be, especially if you're new, hard to figure out exactly what's wrong. So here we're going to use an integer, and we're going to upload the code again. Let's click that. And OK, here we can see that they're turning on and off. And it's looping again, just like it did the first time. So that was a problem. We were just using the wrong data type. So here we go. We replaced a whole bunch of code. And I'm going to go ahead, guys, and I'm going to delete all these comments just so you can see how many lines of code we saved. And I'm going to leave the comments that were there by default, like this one and this one. Okay, because they come when you open up the IDE. We took this down to 27 lines of code, and that includes a lot of extra white space. So we have here, really, we get rid of all the spaces, and we still leave those default comments intact. We have only 21 lines of code, okay, two of which are comments. So we really were able to scrunch this program down just by pairing a for loop or three for loops in this instance with arrays. That's the lesson, guys. We're going to do some more stuff with arrays before we get into collecting data with sensors because you can collect hundreds or even thousands of data points say with a sensor if you're measuring the temperature every, even if you're measuring every few hours or every hour and you're doing that for days and weeks on end, you're gonna collect a lot of data points. And to have to type digital write, blah, 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 over and over again, it's just so cumbersome. So I wanted to get the for loop and the array pairing out of the way before we got into using arrays to work with sensors and collect data. Because again, when you are working with sensors, Depending on what you're sensing and what your sampling interval is, you can rack up hundreds or even thousands of data points pretty quickly, and you're going to need to use arrays with for loops for that. So until next time, guys, go out, give this a try, practice, and I'll see you next time.